I have a Game Boy Color in Portugal somewhere. Somewhere. It's just floating around. It's like David Carradine. <laughs> it goes on adventures yes. in the small town. <laughs> it's all <solves> crime. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all in our little Linux powered studio, joined by one particular Jordan Swang and his um Do you have any more of the orange soda? No, I drank it all. He's he's it defeated. Was, it, was, it was it was green soda. <laughs> I, uh, color blindness. It was is lime. Bitch, I know. <laughs> <laughs> lime green soda, baby, and that is the dulcet tones of Pedro Mateus. Standing late past the right time. <laughs> Together with you, Shot Rum Dynamic, joining us live on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. I redid the things. So I don't have the funky voice this week. Apologies. I know. Beep boop. <laughs> I am a cocaine Voltron robot. <laughs> Maybe I can throw that in post, but I'll probably forget. So that's what's new. What's going on? Uh, Jordan, you have um, graced your eyeballs with the cinematic masterpiece Velocity. Tour de Force. Yes. Um, I mean, so, uh, we, we did a, we did a movie night yesterday and, uh, Velocipaster, you know, that movie about the, the guy whose parents dies and then he goes to China and, gets turned into a raptor and then he comes back to you know save save a hooker's soul that one um surprisingly good uh i i i quite enjoyed it um they 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 took a very they took a very like black dynamite-esque approach of like it, it is an intentionally bad movie and like at no point do they make it clear that anything is being taken seriously and oh that's always the best thing though isn't it you're like all right we're just here to have fun I, I mean, they're, they're in the beginning of the movie, this is no spoiler. There's an explosion, and the, it just cuts to like VFX shot missing, and then back to the dude's face. VFX shot missing like two, three more times. It's like ah! it, was, it, was, it was, it was, it was quite good. I, I enjoyed it. If, if, if you, if you got to kill ninety minutes, go give Velociraptor a watch. It's or Velocipapster. Velocipapsmear. That's what it's called. Did uh, Colonel Five Fourteen One give you a hard time? No, but five fourteen zero did. Yeah, um, I, I want. I wanted the. Uh, I wanted to play with the USB audio enhancements that uh, came with five fourteen. Yeah. Um, apparently, apparently, it came with some network card enhancements. So running uh, NetJack off the laptop uh, did not work very well. But fortunately, I'm like, have I'm just, oh five fourteen one is out. Does that fix it? Yes, it does. Hooray! Right. Right. Good job. Hmm. Good job, Colonel Org team. Arg pirate colonels, and I guess not to defeat his um nigh perfect track record. Pedro didn't do anything this week, so I'll go ahead and talk about uh, a little bit of retro, a little bit of vintage technology that I ran across. Um, 1987 was a strange time. I need to look up and see what was going on in 1987. But uh, courtesy of Guitar Center's use segment, uh, I like to call. We don't know what this is, so put a price tag on it and put it up. I managed to uh, run across an Aphex uh, 301 compeller. What's a compeller, Jordan? It compels, I assume. I'm compelling the shit out of stuff right now. <laughs> I, like nobody's business. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you get an idea of it. It is what auto gain control was and how it was done in the 80s, 90s, and still today. You'll still see these in um, FM stations, AM stations. And it does the compression, leveling, and um, expanding all in one. Very interesting board I was more fascinated with. This is not exactly what I was looking for. I've always kind of like looked around for a 320D giggity. But I saw this for 99 bucks. I'm like, hey, we're going to do a video. Maybe, you know, I had to recap a few things to make it right where I wanted it. But I'm using it right now. And uh, surprisingly, it, it, do you ever like deal with something like an older piece of technology? You're like, how are you doing that? You're doing a good job. Huh. That's all they did in, in the olden times. Nothing. So not no. a not a peep. No. I, 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 I don't Do know. Old 1980s count? didn't exist in Amazon Web Services, <laughs> so I know nothing about it. <laughs> I have a laptop from 1999. That that that's that's about as old as I go for technology, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, my oldest piece of technology I think I own is like my my brick Game Boy, and that still works. So fair enough. 
I have a Game Boy Color in Portugal somewhere. Somewhere. It's just floating around. It's like David Carradine. <laughs> it goes on adventures. <laughs> yeah, it's a small a, town. It's, 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 it's I mean, David, David Carradine isn't floating. He's he's dangling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not unlike the horse. Not, not unlike the <laughs> horse, which I just realized, like, I didn't plug that effect in either. Why don't you people get onto me when I post screenshots of the new setup on Twitter and be like, damn it, you're missing I, You don't pay me enough to be psychic, damn it. Okay, well, you, you know you know who does get paid enough to be psychic and completely squanders that talent? It's the Steam! Yes. What? what? We, we do, and especially what people are saying about the Steam Deck, in specific about the claims that uh, Pierre Loup Griffet and um, what's the other uh, developer's name, uh, Lawrence Yang, were saying uh, in all the interviews that um, they were um, they wanted that uh, the the Gabe Gear to play all the games on Steam, and well, uh, apparently the. Proton President has, uh, he's been dubbed by Rock Paper Shotgun. Uh, <laughs> Someone call Captain Planet. In, <laughs> the current person in charge of um, Code Weavers. Uh, let's see, what's his name? James Ramey. Uh, well, he gave an interview with uh, Boiling Steam on their podcast. And he was saying that, no, uh, he doesn't believe um, that the Steam Deck will be able to play everything that's currently on Steam by the time that it releases. And he's saying that uh, the people are taking it out of context a little bit because that's not what uh, Pierre-Luc Griffet meant when he said that he said that uh, all the games we wanted to be playable are really the entire Steam library. So, yeah, it's weird to me, personally. Uh, that um, they're taking the word of someone who is no longer directly involved with Proton. He was at the start, very much so, but uh, not anymore. And he was never involved with the Gabe Gear whatsoever. And then you have Lawrence Yang actually giving out interviews to other websites saying that, yes, we did mean all the games. That's very much what we meant. So I guess we'll see. I don't know. Like you, you would think the the president of Code Weavers, you know, the the corporate body that's actually doing the a large amount of the principal wine development, would know a thing or two. And I mean, here here's the thing: DXVK. D, DXVK is not a magical tool that solves all your fucking problems, man. It's, it isn't. But, but it, it is but the thing here, that made. The thing. But listen, I, I would I would trust him to know about the state of what wine can and cannot run more than you. Uh, that, but here here's the thing: even even as it is, even with not having full compatibility in wine, at least with with Proton, with DXVK, with uh, D3D VK, and whatever, it's still going to be a big hunkin' library of games. Like all of the fucking Unity games that are out there, that probably consists of most of the stuff that people are playing, will run. That that's not gonna that's not gonna be a problem. You're gonna have a much larger library of available games than say your next competitor like the Switch, most of which you already own anyways, because you've been accruing games via Steam sales and never playing them like the rest of us, because we all have a fucking disease. Uh, I, don't, I don't I don't know. So if we really want to focus in, I mean, uh, you know, like Grafas basically said, you know, all the games that we wanted to be playable is really the entire steam library we haven't really found something we could throw at this device and it couldn't handle now rami came back and he's like i think he was trying to state that the device itself the hardware specs on the device can support any game now as somebody i'm not terribly i'm interested in the game gear simply for what it's going to do for linux gaming and the adoption of linux me personally portables not my nice but does anyone really care as long as they get EAC working? I think that's kind of that's the main the thing one. is, yeah, if, <laughs> yeah. if re regardless of the success or failure of the Steam Deck, if that if we get like functional EAC running in wine that doesn't just insta ban you, that's that's a win in many of our books. Probably not Valve's book, but definitely ours. And I want anybody who has um, the Game Gear currently right now, try to get Darksiders 2 vanilla version up and running. 
That, that's, my, that's my litmus test <laughs> for this to see if anything's really changed because that game has never worked in the history of ever. So mm. I, I'm kind of curious about that. But who knows? I mean, this is Valve, so mixed messaging, marketing. I mean, they're doing good so far. So, did you see the uh, Terraria developer posted the um, yeah picture following the rules? You can take a picture yeah, yeah. of your game running <laughs> on the game gear, and you can't show video of it or anything like that. And Pedro spotted the uh, thumbprint of authenticity. <laughs> to <laughs> yeah, no, I, I noticed the smudge on the screen. It's like, oh, someone was playing around with their touchscreen, weren't they? Okay. Mm. <laughs> I, I would have put that there to be like, look, it wasn't photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. So if you have just running regular Steam and you've started up recently, you might have noticed uh, things have changed up to including your um, downloads. Because this is something that's been in the beta for a while, and we've talked about it being in the beta client, but if you look up, if you're watching the video version, it looks completely different and new. So, yeah, that's why your download section looks a little bit wonky. A um, couple of new things in this that's in the official client now. Um, new storage management bits. I'm happy to see that. And you, too, can experience the gang of, I'm guessing, shader updates every single time you launch fucking Steam. Um <laughs> Also, P.S. on behalf of myself and Pedro Mateus, you're welcome for the nine megabytes of uh, Dark Alliance um, caching. Because, uh, yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> no one else is playing that right now. I, I've had that game installed for a few days and I went into it a couple of times just to play around with some things before. I, uh, and no updates after we get done playing it. Uh, I started Steam when I got to the house this afternoon, got nine megs. I'm like, ha ah, ha. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, every, every, every drizzle strider. That's everyone. That is a thing. So that's a stable client, but we got a hot beta, some new stuff. We do. If the previous story was about the rollups of all the other, uh, betas we've been talking about, th well, this is the new beta branch that starts right now. And, uh, lots of Linuxy stuff on this one. Well, it's mostly the runtime, the scout runtime and the heavy runtime have been updated uh, the they improved compatibility with an old deprecated uh, NVAR, which is SDL Audio Driver Pulse, which is some some old games still use it, which yeah. makes sense. Why? And the, uh, the the one that really caught my eye was um, uh, use read link dash f instead of real path for better compatibility Woo! with Ubuntu fourteen oh four, which Finally. again. Probably talking out of my butt here, but uh, shouldn't that have been EOL'd in 2019? Nope. <laughs> here, 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 here's the thing. I had to disable ReadLink on a Fedora system forever ago to get The Witcher 2 Eon port running because it just didn't work with ReadLink. So, you oh, know, no. you know may, may, maybe this is an important bug that got fixed. I don't know. The one thing that caught my eyes is go. apparently LibCups, right. you know, the common Unix printing system gets mm -hmm. added to the runtime. Why we why we need printer support in Steam <laughs> is beyond me. I'm I'm assuming it is. So I thought at first, oh, maybe it's like some civilization game that actually has like a play by snail mail option. Possibly, but yeah. It occurred to me just before this segment when you make a Steam purchase, there is a little button that says print, print. receipt. Print oh. receipt. <laughs> if you need a physical copy of your receipt. Good, sir. I'm glad you tracked that down because when I saw yes. you put that in the show notes, I immediately screened Steve and I'm like, all right, under help, is there a print? And it, no, there's not. So what? It, maybe it's the Chrome. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the print. Print re print receipt. Yeah. Has print anyone, receipt. Yeah. Someone print a receipt. <laughs> Go buy something, print a receipt, and send us a screenshot of that. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah. It's probably the same as the email that you get. <laughs> it's just that in PDF. Listen, I'm trying to give somebody <laughs> something to do, Pedro. Quit raining on I'm trying board. to get someone's credit card number. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, great. You spoiled it now. No one's going to. <laughs> oh, they'll still do it. Probably. You think people listen to this crap? A <laughs> couple of new games this week, starting with Cathedral. 3D, not 4D. They were, they were banned. Not allowed to do that. But... Mm -hmm. This has been out for a minute, but 1.6 is out, and it has introduced Mac and Linux support. A couple more updates. I played around with it. How much is this thing? Uh, by the way, they sent us... <laughs> <Get this. laughs> I've been over this with Pedro. Um, earlier this week, uh, correctly, they, they knew how to read the contact form, and they sent it to our show email address with links, and like, here's a review copy. I'm like, well... I don't know. Maybe I'll play that or send it to Pedro or Jordan. Hey, do you guys want to play this during the week? 
a couple of days later, they emailed me again for a different outlet. Uh, who was it? Uh, Fossman. Sorry, I got your key as well. Um, <laughs> oops. <laughs> and it did that. Then later on in the week, Pedro hits us up with an email. I'm like, yo, we got three copies on Curator Connect. Yep. Uh, unprovoked, too. I didn't send him an email or anything. So the, they sent us four keys. Well, five. <laughs> That's the thing. Now, I don't know. I, I, like, I like the booby grabby motion in the trailer. He's just like, mm. man, that's just because you want people to grab your boobies. It is. Why isn't anyone <laughs> grabbing my boobs? Damn it. You're going to have to shave them first. Never. Oh, man. So check this out. Uh, there is a screen resolution option. Why don't you guys throw that in? Uh, do everyone a favor with that. It is rather <laughs> basic as an actual game. I'm not, I'm not hating on this. Uh, kind of like uh, rise of the triad flashbacks, but a little more basic than that. And I don't necessarily say this as a compliment to myself. Uh, this does look like something I might've pooped out over a weekend in the nineties, but so, I mean, it has that going for it. I mean, it's authentic. With yeah, it's, the, uh, it's got that uh, ziggurat vibe going with like the magic based first person shooter. It it does. It, yes, but it's even more limited than that because well, yeah, uh, it, it you, looks like an it looks like an e duke game, obviously. But mm -hmm. yeah, but it is. Uh, if you ever played um, Devil Daggers or Death Daggers or whatever that game yeah, was I called, that game for Devil Death Crossbow, Dagger Deluxe Daddy, like a Crossbow person. Knight. Um, it's literally an arena map. And you have to survive for as it's long as possible. One. And your attacks are like yeah. laser beam and pew pew beam. And, and shotgun. It's like a shotgun with a bunch of fireballs or just rapid fire fireballs. And you have to protect the chest that your heart is in, which uh, it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, so, okay. So is, is, defense, that, is that what that is? the game's defense, man. It's four ninety nine. Because yes. I, I, I was going to say, yeah. if. If the melee weapon is a handheld mimic that you hold in your hand and like feed enemies to, that would have been amazing. No, no, no. You uh, you need to carry that if you want to recover your uh, fireball uh, uh, magic power boo. or your health because your heart is in the box. Boo! I, I want I want mimic melee yeah. weapons. Damn it! That would be that's a good idea. Damn it! Someone make a game about mimics. that. So the next little bit of update that we have for everyone is a game we played a long time ago, maybe like a year or two ago, Surviving Mars, which was surprisingly very good for a walking simulator. Yeah. Uh, actually, you're, you are thinking of the wrong one. Uh, this is the yeah. uh, this is the base building game. This is a, it's a 4X uh, Mars survival game slash space country music simulator, because there is a lot of country music on the soundtrack. Uh, this is the DLC for it, uh, Below and Beyond. And it looks like it's adding stuff like uh, building underground bases, underground resource extraction, and stuff and whatnot. Then uh, you were, you were quick to point out, yeah, very negative because of that price. They're charging what was it, uh, twenty two seventy nine Canadian, and the people for the DLC, baby. Yeah, yeah, 20, 20, 20 bucks US, and the people in the reviews are saying like, yeah, for how buggy and crashy it is, and how much content <laughs> is actually getting added to the game, it's not worth. The twenty dollars, which is, I guess, unfortunate for the developers. Uh, I, I, I guess I don't know. I know I, my old roommate used to play a bunch of this, and I think I watched Foxy stream a bunch of this forever. Look ago. at this, man! Don't buy this DLC <laughs> recommended. Um, hmm. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> may, maybe that's right. to <laughs> yeah, that's to like bring it, it to the top visible, of the uh, right. positive thing. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's bad form. Now, my first thought when I saw this was uh, 100% like, man, that's expensive for DLC. But the day I noticed it, and again, apologies, I really thought this was the walking Mars simulator. Doubly so when I went to the web zone and I looked at it and it had the little Martian guy walking. Like, I remember playing that game. Uh, apparently not. And I should have taken advantage of the day or two that it was completely free. But mm. oh well. Yeah, it was free to keep for uh, the best part of the uh, the week. But that's gone now, so... Mm. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's why they're charging you $20 for a busted DLC. Yeah, very negative right off the bat. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th this this next story is uh, not so negative, but it's a, it's a little sad nonetheless. The final, the final oh, updates 
to Ultimate Chicken Horse. You may have seen us play this game in the after show. It's pretty fun. You get to sort of build your platformer level as you go, and you got to like make traps that other people will fall for that you can you can uh, get over, and it, it, it's fun. It is. Um, and they've been they've been pretty steadily uh, pumping out updates for this. Uh, they're adding a new character, the Hippopotamus, that has an alternate Triceratops skin. There's a brand new level in the roller coaster, and. Here's the here's the sad part. So apparently, uh, the moral of the story is that if you're using uh, Unity's built-in online multiplayer functionality, it is not very future-proof. So uh, that will cause you some problems in the long run. This is what um, this is what these guys have run into. They're working on updating the server backend so that the game can continue to function. But they are working on a new project. They can't devote the same amount of resources they could to updating Ultimate Chicken Horse. So it's likely once that's fixed, that is going to be the last update. And you know what? Here, here's the thing. Ultimate Chicken Horse was a successful Kickstarter that continued to deliver post-release. So I think they've earned their goodwill. Yes. And I'm, defi- I'm definitely curious to see what uh, their next project is. I hope it's something like completely different. I'd, I'd be interested to see what these guys can come up with. 100% on that. And, you know, I, I went looking around because, you know, when they initially announced this, I, I scanned over and I'm like, come on, add more than four players. I want eight plus player modes. Blindness be damned. I want chaos on screen. <laughs> has nothing to do that we play games in the after shows and, and four people is not enough. Um, but yeah, the new coaster level and all that triceratops bug fixes, nothing really to complain about with this game. And like one of the being the final update that does crush any dreams of them adding, you know, a five plus player mode. I went to their forum just out of curiosity. It's like, has anyone ever brought this up before? And they had, and the developers had written back like, no, I don't think we're ever going to make that a thing. Which is a shame because this would be a great little chaos simulator, but it's just not in the cards, which is unfortunate. Yeah, and they do say that the just because they're not putting any more new content in the game, that they're just going to drop it outright. And there will still be support. There will still be events in game. The servers are going to keep running. It's just that there's no new content. Mm. They're going to move on to work on new things. And I, if you think about it, that game is like five years old now. It's, oh, yeah. it's been around a minute. Yeah. Like that's that's a pre- that's a pretty good life in terms of like a, a game on Steam. Period. They managed to turn it into a nice, stable-ish game compared to like the psychotic little clusterfuck it initially launched at. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, it's good on them. Good on them. Now, something we try to keep abreast of is our Epic Watch. Of, um, this all started when Epic decided to get into a pissing contest with uh, D- Jordan's dogs, which are barking. Yeah. <laughs> Appar- Shut the fuck up, Luna. <laughs> Live. <laughs> so, God damn it. All right. Uh, let me know what. Give me a secret signal when you get that taken care of. Um, so, here's the thing we started covering it. Um, Epic had an issue and they, 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 they took issue with. Um, what was it, Pedro? Just because uh, they had Fortnite and they're like, you know what? We don't like Apple taking a cut of this payment. So you just buy it directly 30%, from us. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. Apple, you know, some would say rightfully so <laughs> that that's against the contract that you signed to do that. Boom. You're off the store. Yeah. Which uh, Tim went, Tim immediately ran out. Hey, children, <laughs> help, help us fight the big bad apple I, I, like immediately after they already had a trailer ready for it and everything yeah, it's almost as if they were yeah, deliberate about it, it. That, that, mm. that was bad bad <laughs> bad form well court case has been going down it ensued and judgment has been rendered check it out epic is uh, staying banned from the app store and they have to pay 30 percent, 3.6 mil from the revenue they made with the epic direct payment shenanigans so um now this is the good news that came out of it app developers are no longer prohibited from including external links and buttons to external payment methods which they were before if you had like a yes. like if you go to netflix on ios there's no like sign up or anything like that it's just log in name and password and there's no information no way to click to any thing outside of the app to get you to a place where you can sign up that was prohibited if you had that in your app it would be rejected now you can put that in there yeah you gotta you gotta love any any conclusion that fucks over both uh both big corporations involved right I mean, it does it's this, like this the entire best possible was, outcome yeah. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> you have uh, Epic that gets to stay bad from the App Store. And um, they have to pay the 30% of the money that they made after they went against the terms of service. Uh, and the um, Apple, uh, well, they get to allow people to have uh, links to external websites or uh, other ways to pay for the things. So, yeah, no, the judge, many, many rounds of applause to Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers. Very, very good. Uh, but, of course, Tim, being the butthurt little that he is, uh, is appealing. I mean, it's, it's any sort of court case is going to get appealed. That's not, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's process like Oracle in, in, appealed in, in the pa- Oracle in Pedro's thing. defense. When Gabe got shut down with the patent thing, Pedro's like, Oh, Gabe's just being his little old self that he is appealing. Yeah, no, but like th- th- this is good. As, as, as Ven said, adding other that payment one made methods. Sense. This one doesn't into into uh, the app store really really improves the interoperability <laughs> status of like the apple ecosystem which like in, interop is how we kill these giant um these giant monolithic corporations that have access to or exclusive access to large swaths of our data so yeah and yeah and the good news is, is there's no chance of anybody ever killing any of these large giant corporations with large swaths of our data that's reality but yep. here's the but thing we, man. We, we can um, we can legislate it to make their lives difficult you can until they buy the legislators off. Uh, yeah, don't let them do that. <laughs> Lobbying. <laughs> legalized um, corruption. Bribery, yeah. Stop. <laughs> right there. Uh, this is still a lot of friction for customers, even on Apple's mm-hmm. platform, because, you know, you still cannot do the, you know, click a thing and just do the payment processing directly from there. It's going to take you outside of the app. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it's good. I even saw um, the, uh, you know, Linus, Linus does that tech show, and um, they were talking about it for a uh, float plane. So that was like something they couldn't do. People, they, they you don't understand how much customer support we got. Like, how do I sign up for this thing using the iOS app? Mm-hmm. It's just not obvious. You, you, you know, you use, you use Safari, <laughs> and then which is the only browser allowed on iOS. By the way, yeah. you can make yep. as many skins for, for Safari as you want, but you can't make your own browser. But brought uh you got to think about that though now they can at least put the text in there with a hyperlink it says by the way if you would like to sign up so good things good things come out of this and it, it's win for everybody i said initially to the surprise of no one i mean this wasn't reading the tea leaves of like don't fuck with apple yeah you're trying to be a dick to apple apple's the supreme dick they got you beat um, they've been they've been doing it for like 40 years now money too. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. They have more than Epic money. They have more than Fortnite money. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so is that going to do it for a Steamy News I th- this I th- week? I think that's going to do it for us. Coming up next, there's RuneScape drama. You <gasps> thought we were out of 2002? Well, Guess what? You're wrong. I suppose we already give people the chance to um, actually title the episodes. Yes. If you're watching us live, you get your say uh, in what the Podcast episode is called. Get your say. <laughs> you get all the says, to be fair. If you're watching us live, you see those people talking down there. They're watching us live, crazy as they may be. Uh, but if you don't get a chance to watch us live and you still like to show your support for us, there are a multitude of ways that you can do that. And Jordan's going to tell you all about them. I absolutely am. You can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Give us money. You can give us varying denominations of currency and get various stuff in return, like access to our Discord channel, show note access, pre pre super shows and live video feed, your name in the credits. You can even buy your way onto the show if you want. Um, special we got, podcast. We got, yeah, special podcast. Uh, yeah, what what uh, did the they, out, for the yeah, what did they miss out this week? Um, like the Matrix what? 4 discussion? Uh, Matrix word discussion, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Uh, oh, what, what else? There had to have been more in there. <laughs> Tra- it we, was we, the we, 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 uh, equivalence between uh, the Breaking Bad and the Matrix trailer and how they're going to play it out. <laughs> we, we, we talked a little bit about the, the, the new Picard trailer as well. Yeah, we did. We, sp- speaking of, what, what if what if Picard was Hitler? Find out our thoughts on that. <laughs> we got uh, we got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com, where, no, I'm not going to say that one. That's too racy. But you can still buy some <laughs> sick LGC merch, coffee cup stickers, T-shirts, mas- masks, masks, Sick. Hoodies. Are you saying our merchandise is pre-diseased? 
Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Then <laughs> it will give you cholera. Uh, yeah, we, we got we got wish loans as well. Uh, head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Put your mouse over the sport tab. I have a wish list. Ven has a wish list. Pedro has a wish list. If you send us stuff, you can also send us notes that we have to read. If you send Ven some stuff, then your name will show up on the glowy, now slightly better to read wall. It was, it was a lot worse a couple of years ago, but I think I think now you can actually see. Uh, no, 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 now all we can see is Gnuru and Dias. You can read on Dias. Isha. And he should. Yes. And, 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 and John is Von? like half. Von? <laughs> right. Yeah. See, so you now you got to read any of them. Now it's the EP. Yeah. It's now, just now, now, now it's just Uxgne. <laughs> good old, good old Uxgne. There. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the, the one, the one guy. No, it's just Tillis now. I can wave them into being Lennox. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if, if, if you want us to do this kind of dumb shit to your name, send Ven some stuff off his wish list. We got to thank all of you people for making this possible. We don't run ads. We don't have my pillow sponsorships. We're not telling you to go buy a flashlight that you can have sex with. Although I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Um, we have a long-standing but, yeah. tradition. We will only accept advertising money from Microsoft. Yes. yes. Hi, hi, Sriracha. <laughs> De- they still definitely haven't taken us up on it. <laughs> yeah, definitely gonna, definitely gonna give us a sponsorship deal if I can't even get the guy's name right. No, Absolutely. man. <laughs> the goal is to piss them off when they just buy us out. I mean, yeah, that, that, that would be that one is, heck of a bank to go out. Microsoft until, bought us. We have a ton of money. Peace. <laughs> until then, we live and die on your support. So if you can't give us money, at oh, least tell man. some people about it. Yeah, inflict the, the confusion on others. Here's what I'm thinking. What, what, what if it's like um. Like one of those buyouts. We, 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 we got to draw this out to the bitter end here. But it's okay, right. here's the thing. They got to cut the check. And let, let's say everybody's got our price. We've all found our price. Apparently my price is somewhere about 2.3 mil because that's how much that damn castle in Michigan <laughs> would cost me. Mm. But they do the thing. They're like, no, but you got to stay on for two years to prevent, you know, everyone just leaving. Yeah. So, But then we got to mm-hmm. do two mm-hmm. years of... No, no, yeah, that, but we got to do it all for the WSL, man. What does subsystem Linux yep. cast? Yeah. <laughs> try, try run games online in WSL. That's, that's our new podcast. Do, do you yep. think you could handle a um, hundred episodes of that for 2.3 mil? Um, No, no, I don't. <laughs> 2.3 mil, I'll, probably. I, yeah. I, I, I will take the money and then I will also produce a lovely splatter. Um. <laughs> I will from, fake my from, own death with a bit of the money <laughs> and then I don't have to do <laughs> well you don't tell them that you dummy Too late. <laughs> so uh, something that's been around for a long long time is RuneScape and you know they get R2007 scape and there, there's a lot of fan involvement I, I was kind of shocked at the beginning uh, when I read about this because like, people still play that and I headed over to um, what was it uh just the runescape uh population thing and yeah i mean damn game still has an active player base i mean sometimes like over a thousand people at one time during the week every day will be hitting that which is very impressive but something happened that in bird culture like go fuck them so this came from um runelight hd it's been shut down this is a fan-made project they've been worked on over two thousand hours of work have been put in uh by a fan man it's like hey i i want to make this really cool i want to upgrade everything you know better graphics and all that yeah they walked in and uh like no you don't get to do that you don't and yagex or jagex jagex Jagex. i call it jagex Jagex. the day this guy was getting ready to launch this free of charge for the community uh they walked in and said um yeah you need to take that down in light of the reveal that they have a similarly themed graphical improvement project that is relatively early uh, motherfuckers all right yeah they, they walked in with him getting they pulled a straight up nintendo getting ready to release on that day and they said you know what we're kind of thinking about maybe doing something a little bit similar to that but way down the line in the future so fuck you don't don't release your thing and um 
the the community didn't take too well to that. Not even a little no. bit. Surprisingly, <laughs> shock and shock. Like the people who were still playing this damn game, uh, they lost their shit, got unhinged, and did you know do your thing, Reddit. The hug, the hug of death. So yeah, the, the the moral of the story is that now, after all that drama, they're now going to be shipping Roulette HD with the official client. It's going to be oh, it's going to be on I, Monday. So it's going to be on a yeah. Monday. Like so, they they <laughs> were intimidated by this guy who was who essentially finished a project that they were toying about working with, threatened to take him down, and then decided to just use his shit anyways. Stop making me like point to EA as the good guy here. I don't want to defend <laughs> EA. I don't want to sing their praises, but you're not making it easy, Jagex. You're not. My, it's like, what is the logic with like pissing off the remaining people who are playing your game from 2000 and 1999? I'm sorry. Yes, right about that time, but uh, yeah. I, I don't know. But they really seem, uh, it's not the first time that uh, the no. developers of RuneScape have had uh, run-ins with their community and bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Although this, I think, is the first example of them actually caving in a timely manner. It only took like three days of people constantly berating them on the internet for them to go, okay, maybe this was a bad idea. I guess, going, I guess it goes oh, to show. Yeah, let's make the thing official. <laughs> I guess it goes to show you how much like people actually love the fan made tools in RuneScape, especially just because mm-hmm. like yeah, it's built on ancient fucking Java web apps from forever ago. The fact that it's like even remotely playable now is a minor miracle. Uh but yeah. Uh, listen, ga- game developer, developers, game publishers, people who just make games, period. If you have fans that are doing things to enhance your game and are giving them away for free and want to work with you, just hire them. Why? Why? Don't yes. reinvent the wheel. Don't, and don't be dicks about it. it just, I, I, for me, the moral of the story <sighs> is if you're going to be dicks about it, be honest about it. You're like, no, we don't <laughs> want that. We want you to use the thing we did. Even you know, Don't come up with some bullshit like, oh, yeah, we were thinking about doing something like that. And it, Somebody, we totally had a conversation about that like four months ago, kind of on a weekend when we weren't thinking about anything else. So no, yeah, get fucked. Yeah. Um, I'm glad this worked out <laughs> for the better. And yes, this will be available for Linux. Good. Yeah. To no. Yep. Pedro, we might have to go back. You know what? I have received more than one comment as in the last two months of people like, hey man, are you guys going to keep doing this? Yeah, every now and then there's someone who goes, so you guys going to finish Black Mesa Coop? Or, well, we couldn't because the original mod uh, was only done up until the uh, halfway through the big three-headed thing that uh, moves with sound. So you have to turn on the fuel and you have to turn on the air and you have to turn on the power. Ah, yeah. the, uh, the tappy stabby thing. That, that's yes. what it's called. Uh, sure uh, <laughs> so yeah it was halfway through killing that thing that it the mod just the original coop mod just ended but now there's another one except this one is a little different uh it is a coop mod for black mesa that allows multiple players and it supports everything it seems to have all the chapters included but Instead of being everyone uh, in the server needs to have the mod installed on their end, it's client side, uh, it's server side. It needs to be installed on the server and only on the server. So that is different, I suppose. <laughs> it is a yeah, bit I different. Mean, I went looking back uh, just out of curiosity if, uh, earlier this week. I'm like, did, did the guy ever finish up the levels? And I saw that he had posted. Hey, you know what? Production stopped. I'm like, oh, that sucks. He's like, because there's an official one done by the Black Mesa team members or whatever. And here it is. To which I, I read through that. And I'm like, man, that's a lot more involved than the one we were using. Uh, then Jordan's like, don't worry, guys, I'll set up a server for you. Yeah, I mean, it being entirely <laughs> server side is nice. It seems steel. I exist. I'm sure there's like a bash script. I can, it's, you know, what? there's probably something on Docker Hub. I've, let's let's be real. I'm going to be lazy like that. Um, but yeah, like I don't, I don't know. Running running a dedicated server in 2021 is an awful way back when when you had like a single core Pentium or AMD Athlon or whatever running the game server in the game at the same time. Yeah, it's a little dicey. But these days with your multi core CPUs and your gigabytes of RAM. You might be able to squeeze a little game server in there. 
Oh yeah, it'll, it'll it'll be tough. You might have to pause the YouTube video, but you can do it. It will be interesting, and uh, yeah, if we get something back up and running, that could be a uh, you know some Friday food bar bait. Bring in a gang of people and like, hey, let's power our way through uh, Black Mesa because I'm currently on the road to Zen, but I'm in such an epic fuck. I haven't forgotten people. I know some people just tune in <laughs> when I'm doing that. <laughs> I know exactly the <laughs> epic fuck box I'm trapped in right now. That's why there hasn't been a road to Zen in the past month or so, because I'm like, oh, I don't even know how I'm going to get out of this. So, serious engine with ray tracing. Hmm? Mm-hmm. It could be a thing, but there's no description, website, or topics provided. So we're just going to have to get, no, this is just what it says on the tin. Now, I want to go ahead and point out, because somebody might be ahead of me, like, this is Windows only. Agreed. But... It's open source. So, uh, in the, however, Pedro believes that uh, it would be completely impossible um, beyond. Uh, didn't say that. That's what it says. <laughs> completely impossible. Pedro Mateus, right there in the show notes. Yep. Um, it did, yep. Didn't say that. Just because that's how Jordan interpreted it, that's not what I said. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Your, your response to my point about it being based off of Icky Butt's version. So yes. that there there will be a Linux version soon. Count your your, your counter argument is there is some DirectX specific code, and it's not like anything yes, that supported multiple the ray graphical tracing, backends. The ray tracing no, bits. No, were, no, 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 Pedro. Nothing has ever ever supported multiple graphical backends in in the history of open source. Oh, ever. so you're saying DXR and uh, Vulkan ray tracing are the same? I'm saying it can be added to this engine. That the ah. source code is available to. <laughs> okay, because that's probably the reason why it's Windows only. It's because it's DXR that's doing the ray tracing here. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> it's Windows only because the guy who decided to do this is probably running Windows and wants other people here about the project. We'll probably see some Linux support, as with most things. Okay, uh, and if you were doing the Linux implementation of uh, ray tracing for the Sirius Engine 1.10, would you start with IckyButts's, um just the one uh, source code that he put out? No, or would you, know, you take like, someone else's I'm, code like, hang on, hang on, with, hang on. Allow that me already to had DXR? Like, like, the, hey. like this guy's? I don't know. No, yes. no, I probably just walk <laughs> in with DXVK, bitches. Or that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, listen, that would work on uh, Linux without needing I'm, to be I'm, added I'm just, to anything else. I'm just else. saying, yeah. like, <laughs> you, you I mean, seem you to be asked. very adamant. <laughs> you seem to be very adamant that this is entirely impossible. <laughs> Which is that's not what I said. <laughs> this is what you're arguing, though, right now in this conversation that we're having. It's not wrong. I mean, I'm arguing that currently it's DXR. That's it. <laughs> yes, and at no point did I say that. Oh, this will result in DXR getting ported to Linux. I'm saying that someone can add a, another graphical backend. That's it. That's all. <laughs> okay. And now, my counterpoint to that now, was now Kith. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, all right. That's what now, I like. Come to on. Say. You got you got you gotta commit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk let's let's, let's 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 talk about a different kind of X. So oh by the way, all this is gonna be in oh. our show notes. Uh go check yes. that out. Uh, yes. I, I do want to uh before we even get started in this, I want to thank, uh, I got an email from Mark over at uh, Collab- Collabora. And uh, he's like, hey, man, watch the show. Uh, now you guys talk about this kind of stuff. Thought you might be interested in that. I'm like, ah, all right. That's the first time. What do you guys ever like, sent me an email? All right. Hi. Mm-hmm. Hi, Mark. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Google Summer of Code. You might have heard of it. It is where Google sponsors students to work on open source projects for like low hanging fruit and other tickets that need implemented. Uh, and this one is kind of neat. Uh, this is uh, apparently the uh, contributors Remco and Menas were able to uh, implement a lot of uh, mixed reality stuff uh, for Monado and uh, SteamVR, including uh, virtual reality keyboards. The, 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 the giant like hundred plus character, this one, the Chinese <laughs> keyboard, that's a nice touch. I, I like that they're crazy <laughs> enough to try and do some shit like that. Um, but yeah, uh, they, they, they've added um, support for virtual reality keyboards and they to find a format that allows you to create any sort of keyboard you want. They also uh, improved loading of GLTF models. And 
yeah, it's, progress is going on on Monado, and eventually we will be able to go full Minority Report. But this is this is the work that needs to be done before we can do that. I'm saying you need to get the um, wrist weights, man, or you're not going to be able to deal with this Minority Report future. You wave your hands around for a minute, you can be all worn the fuck out. So I'm a crack. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lift my arm. The controller is too heavy. Have you seen? We people? actually had. I've I've like played Wii with people who didn't realize that you could adjust the sensitivity all the way up, and they didn't realize that I'd fuck the other controller up, so they had to swing it around violently to play me in tennis. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just laying down with the controller on my chest, like bumping it around like that, and then flailing. That wears them out real quick. I'm a bad human being, by the way. Just if you're wondering. <laughs> But yeah, no, we had uh, Nova, not the Canadian Nova, the uh, basically the, min, the teeny min, tiny min, version Strider. of Strider. Min, yeah, yes. mini Strider. <laughs> uh, who was very much into the whole uh, mixed reality and open XR and everything else and just actually making stuff work with it. Yeah, Stardust XR. Check it Why out. Why is he not all over this already? Because <laughs> he's terrified of round keyboards. They, 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 they might be. So, yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. So, by the way, check out Stardust XR. They are, it, it's a good project done by a cool person. Um, we got some yeah. super, super fascinating, exciting stuff about peace states. I mean, it's not. It's it's very sexy. It's very electrifying. No, no, no. It's it's a it's a new patch for uh, CPU freck. Uh, there's a brand new uh, AMD CPU frequency control mechanism. Um, apparently, according to the uh, so it will enable better power state management for Zen based CPUs. And according to the benchmarks in the uh, mailing list here, it does actually substantially improve improve the uh, performance to power ratio. So stuff like this is going to be real handy for the new MAD once it gets mainlined into uh, into a kernel. Uh, because any, any, anything to extend battery life or, uh, improve performance at the cost of battery life or do at you, the cost of less battery How much do you want to like crucial. wager that, um, the Gabe gears got a lot to do with, um, a lot of the recent work we've been seeing on Zen. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I, I, I should, <laughs> I'm, and I'm sure there is a bunch of behind the scenes shits happening as well that we are not privy to. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, the Game Gear is most definitely already making waves because from the moment that it was introduced, it got a very positive reception. So, yeah, no, uh, AMD finally actually paying attention to Linux. Although I, I got I got to say, I wonder how much of the new Mad's positive reception is really just because Nintendo didn't come out with a Switch Pro. They came out with the OLED Switch and everyone was just so minute. salty. Uh, that was very like, well timed from okay, Valve. Yes. Okay, yeah. OK, fair enough. There's probably more than a single digit percentage of spite purchases that have went that way in the Gabe Gear just because uh, Nintendo's like, hey, bigger screen. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> Give us money, we're Nintendo. Um, yeah, that's the thing. So, looking forward to that, but not as much as I am about few texting two people. <laughs> yeah, you, no, few you, text. You, you don't want to go few text yourself. I don't know, man. You were sleeping <laughs> on few. Jesus ta- frowns ta- on that. Damn it, there's a futon <laughs> joke in there, but I can't yeah. find it. <laughs> Maybe you should go lie well, down. Uh, well, then. Uh, ponders his uh, laying down options in the future we can talk about uh, the weight v variable or uh, function for um the kernel effectively the <laughs> i guess that finally got to it but yeah no footex 2 has been a thing that has the version 2 patches were submitted a while back i think it was by andre almeida uh, the same uh, and apparently those didn't really work as intended, there were a couple of cases where uh, it caused some major no-nos. So this one, it implements one of the syscalls that was missing. And in case you're getting... Basically, do you remember when Linus was um, throwing shade at one of the Stadia developers about introducing spin locks on Linux? Oh. This isn't a spin lock, but it's about as close to it as you can get. <laughs> well, I, I remember that developer going back and... Like you probably don't want to pick pick the five Linus. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Linus Torvalds. You if he's telling you you're an idiot, you shut up because you're an idiot. Uh, the uh yeah. This one, it basically is an effort to address the same kind of situations that spin locks do in Windows, but on Linux. And there's been a number of attempts to do it. All of them have failed, and this one is the latest one. One of these days, one of 
of these will work properly and there are a bunch of self tests included with the patch they're later on in the thread so you can find them all if you want to give it a try yourself i was uh <laughs> you know like with the fu texas um initially when they were first like here's the kernel patch i was playing around with it and it, it like locked up the box one time. This is early days nowadays uh when it shows up it shows up because i'll be honest with you with um dxvk d9vk and um dx12 implementation vkd 3d yeah it's it's running fast enough man i'm not <laughs> like eh, I'm kinda going yeah no, d- definitely like playing playing ac valhalla uh when it like when it came out when like they, they added the DX, d3d vk support versus like now is night and day mm-hmm. like it was just eating shit on on um pascal gpus and yeah it was like now 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 it's like legit playable you can like straight up just run ac odyssey or ac valhalla at like 60 frames a second it's pretty right nice. and i've been through like i went through horizon ginger turbo which is uh dx12 and like last night i go tune and that'll be up for patrons uh tomorrow when i get the shows posted uh with a pilot episode of uh drizzle and pals with the um we and it never crashed uh, what dark alliance yeah it's the name of it. dark alliance do i pedro mute it or no, he's just not saying No, anything. I'm not saying anything. Why not? Shock. D- because I didn't have anything else to add. I already said everything I wanted oh, to about that one. But I, I wanted more from you, Pedro. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Pedro, I think you need to grow some spine. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> that shit, baby. So, spline, PS formulator version, not even going through that. Um, here's, the, here's the catch for it, though. It's only available for Linux. What is it? Oh, I, I dare you to take a guess. Uh, it's probably PS4 emulator that only runs on Linux. Now, it is closed source, and I had heard about it. I've never played with it. I'm not huge on emulation, not because I'm some hipster purist. I just don't have the time to dick around with stuff like this. But new version is out. A couple improvements, but, you know, a lot of stuff you can get in-game. And uh, But, like, right now... Jordan, wouldn't you say it's kind of fair to say pretty much like 2D only if you expect to play anything? Like uh, Shovel yeah. Knight works apparently quite well. Sh- yeah, uh, Sho- Shovel Knight works. Uh, Undertale was listed in the readme as one of the ones they were actually testing against actively. Um, and yeah, I mean, here, here's the thing. We've, we've seen how fast projects like these can snowball. Remember when our PCS3 was announced and they're like, yep. hey, yeah, we, we, we got we got, a, we got a couple games running on PS3 emulator and now like everything is fucking running and they have a full bulk and back end and so on and so forth. So... Yeah, may- maybe maybe actually when they release the source, which, you know, I, my, my suspicion is uh, it's going to remain closed source due to some uh, less than legitimate methods of achieving the emulation that maybe will get removed later. But I don't know. You know what? If you are the developer of Spline and want to talk about it, you can come on the show <laughs> and tell me what a fucking idiot I am. Yeah, no, the uh, I guess if you're just starting the project and the developer seems to say that. It's closed source because he's trying his best to, um, whether or not that's true, we don't know, but he's trying his best to not duplicate, uh, not have a bunch of forks and people just doing their own thing. So instead of people want to actually get this working, they need to work with him and have the one unified thing. Again, we don't know. That's, mm. that's his word. So, uh, yeah, it is from the looks of it, it there's already like 30 something percent games out of the 1,000-ish that they've tested that you can get in-game, at least. So that's surprising. You are going to need a firmware dump from your PlayStation 4, though. This is like uh, the P- yes. uh, PCSX2. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind as well if you really want to take this for a spin. Remember the um, like the naive times when the um, Xbox 3, whatever the fuck it was, and the PS4 were announced and they're like, oh, it's going to be x86. The emulators will be a breeze and we'll have them in minutes. <laughs> and, and, and then Mark Hand started tearing this apart and it's like, oh, no, this isn't a PC. No. PC is a standard architecture and this is not that. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, the South Bridge is something entirely different now. That That's oof. <laughs> so let's talk about something that is still currently an absolute mess and that's Twitch and their ever ongoing battle against bots well unique take here cotton twitch is suing users over hate raids uh against streamers the lawsuit accuses two anonymous users of targeting black and lgbtqia plus streamers with racist homophobic sexist 
they're going to be suing these motherfuckers. Now, I don't know how to play video. Go fuck. You. No way to pause it. <laughs> Joey Navarro. He's here to sell you some <laughs> some body language courses on, uh, on, on Udemy. So I went through this just kind of looking at it. And you know what? Hey, technically, this is one way to go about it. You know, at minimum, this might uh, make the next round of Edge Lords think twice uh, before doing this nonsense. Since there is now a very real, a higher than non-zero chance, Twitch going to sue your ass over it. But. We can all hope for maybe a chilling effect coming from this. Now, both of these people are out of out of the country. I mean, this this is nothing burger. This is like, hey, look, it, it, it's a hollow effort, but at least it's an effort. I, I, I would like to posit this, Twitch. Just possibly. Just possibly. Quit reading the symptoms and fix your damn butt problem. How about that? That would make a lot of people's lives infinitely better. You know what? People have went so far, I went looking into it, to roll their own anti-bot measures. And it, this is not, this is not rocket surgery because I was taking a look at uh, banned Twitch bots, right? This is a site which utilizes Twitch insights, which handily pulls out bots and gives you the amount of live channels on the names. Fortunately, the uh, other service allows you to just import your um, like bot list, the most because uh, currently, right now, the hotspot is... Look at that. Look, down there. <laughs> I think that might be someone doing it on purpose, to be fair. <laughs> uh, then, then Pedro Mateus, you go over to our Twitch and go to the top post. We're like, with thousands of people going, yeah, the latest one right now is the hotspots. The hassle Yeah, no, the, the winner and Pog. We got those two during the show, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. I just having a look at what people are doing and all, all the nonsense people are having to go through. I tracked out a lot of these, but uh, like the bot network ones. And they're like this, it is one name followed by, you know, your RNG characters. Cause you know what? The bot operators got to be able to track their own damn bots. Something you can't do in Twitch that you should be able to when you're banning things is adding a wild card operator to a name. Yes, could you accidentally ban somebody with like the first six could could I could I take down Haas himself? I could, but I <laughs> I, I want to go back to that Twitch on our Twitch. Haas is like, hey man, I'm not gonna follow anybody until this bot with a Haas with my name in it is um taken poor, care poor of. dude. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it for me, like, is that a perfect fix? But fuck no, tell me that wouldn't cut down on a lot of it if I could just go Right now, and just type Haas wildcard done and not worry about it, at least till the end of the damn stream, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, just carpet the whole thing during the stream, and then after you're done with it, clear it. I, I mean, there, there's also some stuff they could do with, like, making it a little less trivial to register for Twitch accounts, adding some sort of multi-factor thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know. The... I don't see suing these guys as going to be causing the same chilling effect that they're hoping for, because really... How how many concurrent legal cases can Twitch run at a given time, right? Um, it's just going to be a matter Amazon of... Amazon like, money. A Amazon <laughs> money that they are unwilling to fucking spend. On they absolutely... Yeah. yeah. They absolutely yeah. have <laughs> the the resources and the intellectual capacity in that organization as a whole to solve this problem. They just simply choose not to. Um, it probably, I, I brought it up in the pre-show, it probably costs less to actually sue a couple of these guys and have ongoing legal cases than actually commit to developing a solution to this problem. And that is a problem. So it is. And there are a lot of streamers that get uh, bigotry raids, like entire raids of people who push a bunch of bots and then use those bots to spam their chats to become completely unusable. That needs to stop. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this will help a little bit. A, a little bit. I, I, but I, I definitely think this is this ultimately is it, it boils back down to you're, you're treating the symptoms, which. Yeah when you have the know-how and ability and finances and resources to fix the damn problem. And really on my end, and I think a lot of people said, we just want to know what's the real holdup here, Brad? Cause it's something that's not being communicated. Someone's making money off of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, but on that high note, <laughs> <Go ahead and laughs> <cut it. laughs> yeah. Coming up next, go dull your agony with pretty colors and bright flashing lights. We're throwing Ooh. cheers at Revo. Oomph, oomph. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Chair Quisition. This week we're taking a look at Revo, done by Cosmic Misfit Studios on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for about fifteen bucks. What is it? Neon shoot 'em up to a retrofueled fueled synthwave sound. Retrofueled. Retrofueled, man. <laughs> Sharks versus jets. <laughs> IRL. Uh, you've drifted into a sinister space storm far from civilization. Dark ships quickly close in on you, rescued by a mysterious symbiotic vessel. Your only hope of escape is to equip for combat and fight for your lift. Uh, we got to thank Cosmic Misfit for sending us some keys. Um, and I guess I'll get started on Fedora 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, launches out of the box. Holds about 90 for upset UHD. Um, control wise, the DualShock 4 works out of the box and it gives you some options in the control menu for switching your prompts to uh, the PS4 Moon Glyphs. So that that's all great. Uh, the soundtrack is nice. It's kind of it's a little FTL inspired. I can I can definitely hear the influences from several other game soundtracks, but it's not a bad thing. Um, and the neon graphics, I mean, they they work until they don't. I was fully confident for the past couple levels that I played that I lucked out because I was just flailing the fuck around and somehow <laughs> I made it through. Um, so I mean, it's, we're gonna we're gonna be fast on fun. Do you like shmups? If yeah, if no, skip this game. If yes, maybe buy it. It's competent enough. There's like nothing inherently wrong with the game from a technical standpoint. The controls work. The sounds work. Like the shooting mechanics work perfectly fine. Uh, I thought then that's kind of it. I thought the the limited ammo mechanic might be a little interesting, but the game shits so much ammo at you as long as you keep killing stuff. Uh, even even with like the more expensive weapons that eat up most of your ammo, you will do fine. And like even if you need to use the ammo drops, by the time you start killing shit again, you have already built up enough like ammo drops and lives to run you through most of the game. Um, you get the ability to shoot in more directions and in different patterns as you progress. And I mean, when you start, when they start introducing enemies with specifically points that you need to hit, you got to be a little more creative with your positioning. But like I said before, you can kind of flail your way through most of it, given how much like shit the game actually spits at you vis-a-vis -vis, like the, the, the money or the, or the, the, the ammunition. It's, it's, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll make it through it's. And at the end of the day, it's just okay. We'll give it two chairs. All right, I want to kick this over to one Pedro Mateus, since I can see that your puny little graphics card is having a tough time. Yeah, no, so it, it did launch out of the box, so I'll give it that. But yeah, the GTX 1080 apparently is not enough to reach 144 FERPs in this uh, Need that TI, great baby. juggernaut of uh, graphics that is Revo. Yeah, at 2560 by 1440, to be fair. But yeah, it, it's probably something with the particle, particle effects, because that's really the only thing that's going on here. And uh, you should totally bank suggest particle effects. It counts, <laughs> but the <laughs> you're gonna break the Fartiful. bot if you do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Fartiful butt sex. Got it. Yes. Uh, the uh, it, it looks very neon e, but we've actually uh, interviewed a developer that said that's basically colorful programmer art. So cool. I'll take it. Uh, and the speaking of developers. Um, Drew, I believe uh, the name of the developer is uh, who sent us some keys. Uh, he enabled um, Steam input for the PlayStation controllers right out of the box. So basically every controller that I threw at it, it just worked. And for the fun, well, it's a vertical shmup. I've mentioned before that Demon Star was the one, one of the very, very few vertical shmups that I actually truly enjoyed. Unfortunately, Revo gets a little too blinding for me to appreciate anything you get a little reprieve in between levels where you can check uh change weapons or do things but that that's about it it basically just devolves into me flailing the analog sticks while looking at the health and uh ammo meters at the bottom of the screen and honestly that's not terribly fun it's not a bad game by any any means or measure that you might take at it, it is not a bad game. But the more you play, the less you can see, and the less you can make sense of what's actually going on, which leads to some bullshit deaths. Not a bad game, but, you know, not amazing. Could be better. Two chairs. <laughs> All right, hang on, let me reset my bomb clock, see if I can do this, which I'm going to try, man. So over here on Debian 11 with my little uh, 2060, Non Super Edition Threadripper 1920X. Uh, yeah, to what Pedro said, the options for the Xbox and PS buttons, you don't often see that. So I want to always give you 
a big shout out for including those. Uh, completely well done. However, there's no option to dial down that gamepad directional sensitivity. And uh, it's a little sporadic. I'm going to say that. Windowed full screen mode, no problem. Very glad to see that. However, no option for frame limiting or V-Sync. So that OpenGL render is going to be hitting your GPU damn near 99% the entire time you're playing, no matter what resolution. Uh, it can't quite hit 60 at 2160p. It's close, about 55, 56, but it's 100 plus at 1080p. Didn't have a problem there. And uh, yeah, look at it. I mean, it's neon graphics. And it's a nice little synthy soundtrack, but we're here for the fun. And I... I, I do like the having to conserve ammo mechanic. That's the new thing this is introducing that in recent memory, I don't remember a shmup doing. I like that. Had fun with that. Kept things a little more challenging than normal. But outside of that, yeah, you've played this game before. You know, it's fast-paced bullet hell shoot em up with a standard top-down view. You go shooty pew pew, you get some new weapons, and you battle the occasional boss. You know, the guns do remind me a lot. Uh, the mechanics of the gun remind me of this game like four people even know exists called Hellfire on the Mega Drive. Just like one of the games I had. Uh, movement, as I kind of mentioned, is a Wii on the spastic side with no way to dial that down. And let's be honest, neon blindness will get you killed to death more than once. However, for a one-person project, this has plenty of polish. And at, at the end of the day, what do you have? You have Galaga Plus. You know, I had to think about it this afternoon. You know, the last shmup I really enjoyed was Dimension Drive. And it's not because it was a shmup. It was because it introduced a very strange new mechanic where you had to play on two different sides. That was kind of fun. But um, is Revo, like, competently done? 100%. Yes, absolutely. Does it bring anything new to the table? Not really. That's not a bad thing, because, you see, Revo's more like comfort food. It's like a spaghetti and gummy bear sandwich. You know, nothing new. No need to read the fucking manual. Just hop in and pew pew. It does have some rough edges that need filing down. I'm not going to say it doesn't. And I also got to point out, it's $14.99. That might be a bit stiff for some people for, you know, Galaga New Game Plus. Again, it's well done. I appreciate the effort went into it. And, you know, technically outside of a few little things, good job. But, uh, yeah, I'll give you the uh, technical competency pass right there. Sort of want with two gentlemen what could we do as a talentless non-game development hacks to improve somebody's hard six-year project i don't know shmups in general are a really hard uh, genre to iterate on a because they've been around for fucking ever so all the good ideas have been uh yes. mined out um <laughs> but also but also like the the just the, the nature of the gameplay itself really limits you to what you can do. Um, I think I think emphasizing visibility would uh, would definitely help this game out quite a bit. Um, I will say, like yeah. I, I I appreciate the coherent um, design with it, like all of the menus, the oh, yeah. um, HUD, everything. It 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 sticks together, you know. Yes, the, the menu the menus do remind me a little bit of like VR light. Like if you've ever played um, Beat Saber, it has like the menu on like the off angle, and that uh, that's a little strange. I don't know. And to your point of the about the like the stuff, everything's already been made for the most part. And uh, shmups, I mentioned Demon Star. That game came out in 1997. That was the last one that I could remember of these vertical shmups that I really, really enjoyed. So, and you yeah. know, even like, <laughs> doing what it says on the tin, this is an homage to them, mm -hmm. older games. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's going for. And I, I think for the most yeah. part, it nailed that. Um, on solicited thing though, I think, uh, the community as a whole, nothing to do with Linux games, but just gamers as a whole, it might be a bit of a tough sell at that price though. A, a little bit for sure. Espe especially because like, Again, it's it's a it's a vertical sh vertical shoot 'em up, and it's not gonna it's not gonna sell you on the genre if you don't already like it. I don't think that's the, that's a big thing. If you if you if you like vertical shmups or if you just like shmups in general and you want a new one to play, this is a pretty good one. Um, if you are looking yeah. for the game to turn make turn you into a shmup fiend, I don't believe this is it. You know what would you think about like maybe an online letterboard? That could help. Would that bring you back? <laughs> that that would probably help, yeah. Because I will say one thing that has definitely brought me back to a game in general is seeing either of these two psychopaths being ahead of me in something on an online letter. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, all right, let's see if we can do something about that. Um, even if I was hate playing something, I wouldn't go back. <laughs> 
So there, there you go. Encourage spite in your games. That's your recipe yes. for success. Spite right. cells. <laughs> Coming up next. Hot damn. We got a big ass hate mail segment. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. I got, I got two letters this the week. Donkey. Shenanigans. Uh, no, sorry, no, 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 no. I mentioned shenanigans, so I, no, I kind of no, no, no. had to. <laughs> but yeah, it is the end. Uh, you, congratulations, you've made it. Uh, somehow, we all made it. Uh, and if you'd like to let us know... Now I'm thinking wh- about like the end and... You know, this <laughs> the the Metal Gear the Solid end. boss? No, I'm thinking like the song, My Friends. And I here's the one downside of uh, watching the Matrix 2 trailer is now I have... Um, Airplane uh, stuff. Yeah, Je- yeah. yeah, Jefferson airplane. Yeah, all all week, all week. <laughs> Ever since Thursday, that's been. I, so I, I I've had that problem, except it was after seeing Shang Chi and it's Hotel California, just stuck in my head. You know, I'll stick with airplane on that. Um, <laughs> if you want to tell us about the song that you have stuck in your head, uh, you can go to escapecast.com Just oops, push the contact oops. button oops. and uh-huh. uh, <laughs> that's the one. Do better than Vin. <laughs> push the contact button and uh, fill out the forum there's some caveats you might want to read at the top but if you don't well then we get to make fun of you that's kind of the non-existent contract but uh, in totally enforceable indeed. so last week <laughs> right at the beginning of the show i had to mm-hmm. cut that into the very the first thing you might have heard last week was <laughs> jordan saying hey man uh i gave pink eye to my dog <laughs> yeah I've, I've 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 been I've been given her eye drops for the past week now. It sucks. David David wrote in and uh, he had something to say on that topic. Short, sweet, and to the point. Um, do you mind, Jordan? Do you mind? Uh, no. Too much information would have been like me giving you a recording of it. <laughs> no, that- I think your description was pretty graphic, which is kind of ironic considering I'm sure it smelled worse than it looked. But yeah, <laughs> l- l- listen, I'm all about painting the picture with my butt. <laughs> 50 Shades of Brown by Jordan Swan. <laughs> with forward by Pedro Mateus. Now, now to follow this up, uh, this was a problem that Jordan ran into. And this comes from Thunder Perfect Vichcraft. Uh, talking about a game we talked about last week, I wanted to give him a plug. Uh, the Acid Fighter. Yes. And uh, you tried it out on your Fedora box. We all have a billion monitors, as one does in 2021. <laughs> you ran into a, a very SDL, like, 1.x type problem. Yeah. So what had happened was they're they're like, hey, we have this game on itch. Proceeds are going to a very good cause. So I decided to try it out. And, yeah, the I, I clicked on the executable, and it shut off one of my monitors and rendered a screen that showed nothing uh, until I killed it. Uh, and, uh, they, they wrote back, they said, uh, thanks for featuring acid flight about the bug you encountered. Was there an error put? There is not, by the way. Um, when using more than one monitor, um, you can try to open it in the settings.txt and change, uh, in the game folder and change full screen one to full screen zero, which you know what? It stopped them from turning my other monitor off. So I will give them credit, but, 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 um, it still just shows me a window that like shows a picture of like whatever bit of desktop was behind there audio comes out but it still does nothing uh so if you need me to send you like an s trace i guess like hit me up and i can like run it through gdb or some shit i don't know because I, I i you know the the sales of the game are going to a good cause so i really want to make sure that it works on yes. systems indeed so. it does and let this uh be like a little bit of a warning because uh there is some peril of only developing your game on a laptop <laughs> yes uh not that i'm saying you did but th- we run into that a lot, you know, desktop mm-hmm. games. Sing, single monitor workflows. Yeah. I, single sur- monitor, yeah. I'm surrounded by seven <laughs> monitors. So, yeah. You, you always, always plug in that second display, fire it up, see what happens. You know, live a little. Um, and we got a guessing game because something I like to do, and we talked about it uh, with the la- latest uh, OBS update, like week before last, I believe it was, is I always have the development channel open on OBS in their Discord because... They have the OBS bot, which is brilliant. It just shows any type of a commits or pull request or issue reports. And that's fun to read through. And every now and then you get a a pull request to add a new service. And one of my favorite games (laughs) is when the service pops up is to play a game called Porn Cider Nut. (laughs) 
<laughs> you would be surprised. Uh, some of them, not what you think they are. Other ones that look harmless, you're like, I learned something new today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh, uh, urban dictionary that real quick. Yep. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and Matt, um, one of the fine young cannibals on the OBS development team, wrote in about the guessing game. Matt wants to let everyone know, I'm like, don't worry. You know, some of us on the OBS team also play Porn or Not when a new streaming service is submitted to the services list. Now, something I suggest to do. As you do. <laughs> You might be wondering, you've cracked open OBS and you went to streaming servers, like, what are you talking about? There's Twitter, there's Twitch, and, uh, like, other... Click list all services and get some education. Um, don't get too curious if you don't want to be, you know, permanently <laughs> scarred in new and unique ways, but everything... They, Unless you're looking for something to scar you. I know. Or, or you're looking for a brand new <laughs> streaming platform to just be the new hot shit on. There you go. That could yes. do it. I don't know. Um, do you ever do anything like that? Like play guessing games? It seems like like porn or not is a game I've played before. That came from somewhere. Yeah, porn or not has worked in many many occasions. Usually, like user submitted stuff. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> or, or, or 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 like names. Is it a porn star name or is it just an actual name? <laughs> Pet uh, name or porn star name? <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there's a, there's a couple of variations you can play on it. Have fun with that YouTube. Have fun with it. <laughs> it's not like oh YouTube ads. We're not we're not sick for the kids. Oh no no I just like, it, it will hang up sometimes. I've, ne- I've never seen a video stay in like processing purgatory for fuck all reason other than we dropped like Scientology like nine times. Excellent. <laughs> so we got so we got eight more to go. Where like the AI saying. actually goes? Uh, I need a human. I need a human well, right now. No, because the AI is Zenu. <gasps> it's checking. Oh. For, is this going to be have the controversy behind it? Like, no, no. We're just saying we're just mess with you at this point. But we got to mess ourselves right the fuck out of here for this episode. We're running a bit long. I'm going to go ahead and just cue that wee music. Bit. Hey. On that bombshell. Yeah, it's a good time to do it. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm just at Stone on Twitter. I'm hanging out there. But if you like that open federated stuff, we got our own Mastodon instance, thanks to Civic. That's over at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Put that all in your face. I do still post on my Mastodon account. Uh, more active on Twitter. You can at reply me there. I don't have any DMs anywhere to slide into. So just if you got something to say to me, you can always send an email. If you want to keep it under the table, you have something nefarious to tell me about Pedro. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, the usual? Yeah. Regular, I mean, stuff I already know, but maybe you got video evidence. <laughs> I'm Jordan Spung. If you want to find more graphic descriptions of what comes out of my butt, you can follow me on Twitter, at The Burning Fool, or uh, watch me stream sometimes shit out of my ass on twitch.tv slash I'm going to try to play more uh, Baldur's Gate 3 this week because I'm really enjoying it. Hopefully hopefully they fix some of the crashes. Like hopefully there's some patches. Unfortunately there is no Jordan's cat uh, stream on Twitch which is unfortunate but then again Jordan is the one who manages our OnlyFans page so maybe go check that one out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at unaccounted4. Uh, that is possibly the best way if you want to scream at me uh, and you don't have me on Discord because you don't know how to put the upside down D in the name. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Twitter. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> it's not gradual chaos. It is like all chaos all the time. Hey man, all you on can a, eat a large enough buffet. scale, everything's gradual. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can say that about it. I just did. Though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can't say it about our lovely Patreons that are not gradual at all. They're immediate like Omegas, our Theron, our executive producers, Aldius, Barbara M. Scott, Michaud, Fuck Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Holy Toast, and Kohaku, and our little Nikki fans, keeping it real with Rodney, Dangerfield, and Hell, Darkwing, and Abstraction. Oh, yes. We got some sea monsters like Jack B, but no, Ryder X Mark and a Truggy Verit, Justin, Frosty Claws, and Norman. And the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, um, Dan, Dodger? Dan, I see Dodger. <laughs> Rudy B, Elliot, minus nine. <laughs> 
Monica, Alex, Daniel, all of them. Russ Moana. Yeah. Look, at, look at these fuckers. Fine upstanding cannibals, all of them. Ah. <laughs> Noctilus John, the true Echef, Francophiles. Neru. <laughs> the Aldeas. Not, 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 not Tillus, not Toulouse. Noctilus. I think there's a U missing in Noctilus. I don't know. There might be. Maybe. maybe. I right know, now it's uh, just According Tillus. to what's written behind you, yes. You know what? <laughs> at the end of the day, don't trust a person who only spells the name one way. <laughs> Benefire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Five dudes.